As an example, let's modify our previously created custom dialog box to use an event structure instead of a polled architecture. We're going to replace this polled architecture. We're going to add an additional feature as well, which is that every five seconds, if the user has not clicked OK, it's going to beep. So let's start and remove our OK button from the loop and just delete the existing code. We're going to create an event structure which we find in our structures palette here. Notice the unique appearance of the event structure. Also recall we have our event timeout terminal, our event data node, and our event case selector. Much like a case structure, when we place it down, there, there are some automatically created cases. In this case, we have a timeout case, which has been created automatically. Recall that we want this VI to beep every five seconds if the user has not interacted. What that means is we want to take advantage of our timeout case with a timeout interval of 5,000 milliseconds. We're going to place within our timeout event the beep. Find this in graphics and sound beep. Now we have an event structure with a five second timeout, a beep event which occurs within that timeout case, but we haven't yet handled the pressing of the OK button. We're going to create a new event case. We can do this by right clicking anywhere on the border of the structure and choosing Add Event Case. We're then prompted with a pop-up dialog box called Edit Events, which lists all of the existing cases which, as of now, there are none, and it lists all the possible event sources. Notice how it lists application, this VI, dynamic, panes, splitters, and controls. These are all the different categories of events. For now, we want to handle the pressing of the OK button, which, as you can see here, is automatically listed under the controls section. Also listed here is the custom message. In fact, all the controls and all the indicators on our VI will be listed here. Once we click on a control, we're now presented with a list of events which can be used with that particular control. Notice how there's a series of drag, key, mouse, shortcut menu, and a value change event. In this case, we want to handle the value change event. In the next section, we're going to talk about the difference between notify and filter events. For now, just observe that the green arrows indicate that there are notify events and the red arrows indicate that they are filter events. We're going to proceed with the value change event because what we want to have happen is we want the VI to finish when the OK button is pushed which indicates the value change on the button. Notice now we have two cases within our event structure the timeout and the OK. So if we were to go ahead and run this VI if we start it, when we click OK, we notice the VI runs and finishes. If we were to run it again and let it sit for five seconds, we will observe a beeping after five seconds. Now notice something important here. As soon as the event structure fired, the VI finished. This is the behavior we wanted when pressing the OK button, but it is not the behavior we wanted when we pushed nothing. In other words, when the timeout event occurs, we don't want it to stop, we want it to keep waiting. The solution is that this entire event structure should be contained within a while loop. If we choose a while loop from our structures palette and we encompass our event structure within it, we're going to achieve the desired behavior. Before, however, we first must connect up the condition terminal of the while loop. Recall that this particular while loop right now is set to stop if true. So we only want the loop to stop if the OK button is pushed. If the timeout occurs, then we want a false to be spit out so that the loop does not stop. Also notice that if we do not connect the false constant in this particular case, that the tunnel connected here is showing that it is partially shaded. If we were to right click on this tunnel, we see that use default if unwired has been selected. If we turn that off, then we have an open tunnel which is a familiar behavior indicating that 
as evidenced by the error list, we cannot run the VI until we've assigned a value to each case for that tunnel. So right-clicking and turning on Use Default If Unwired can be a convenient way to automatically set a false output in any case where we haven't explicitly wired a constant. Recall that the default value for a Boolean is false. If this wire were a numeric type, the default value would be zero. If it was a string, it would be a null string or an empty string. Let's just create a constant again and explicitly wire it to be false. Now, observe when we run the VI. If we sit and wait for five seconds, we'll hear the beep, but the loop does not stop. It will continue. However, as soon as we push the OK button, we'll observe the VI stopping immediately. There's one other subtle but very important point here. Notice how the OK button is still in the true state. If we observe the mechanical action of this button, we see that it's set to latch when released. Recall back to the description of the mechanical actions that latching is in fact the behavior we wanted for this button. And it should be the case that as soon as the value is read by the VI, that the button will return to its default state. And clearly in this case, that has not happened. The reason is, and this is why it is somewhat of a subtle and often confusing point, the reason is the actual terminal for the OK button is sitting out here. In other words, even though the event structure has fired an event based on the value change of that button, because the terminal has not been read, LabVIEW does not know to reset that value. A simple and very convenient solution is to be very careful always to put the terminal for a Boolean inside the event structure matching the value change for that particular control. Observe now, with the OK button sitting inside the event structure, if we first reset the value so that we can run, as soon as we click the OK button, the event structure still stops, but also notice that the button has returned to its default or false state. There's a secondary benefit to this, and that is when we have much more complicated code with a lot of controls and a lot of different event cases, it's very easy to jump immediately to the right case simply by double-clicking on our control.